How can I help you? I've got this G suit and helmet that my brother-in-law left me. Um, I have no idea what it's worth. I'm ready for liftoff. <laughs> I'm coming down to the pawn shop today to sell my Air Force G-suit and fighter pilot helmet. My 10th anniversary is coming up, and I'm hoping I can do something really nice for my wife. I'd really like to get about $2,000 out of the suit, but if I have to take $1,000, that's more money than I came with. Do you know anything about this stuff? What kind of plane it came off of? Uh, he was flying F-18s. It's desert camo, so I'm assuming it was probably used in the Gulf War? Yeah, it was desert storm, yeah. OK. A G is a measure of the force of gravity. 1G is normal. As a matter of fact, I'm pulling 1G right now. <laughs> but a fighter pilot can actually pull up to 9Gs, and all that gravitational pull can make you pass out. And that's why they wear a G-suit. It helps counteract the effects of gravity on the body. You wear this, it goes around your waist, and it fills up with air and squeezes your lower body really tight. Why does it do that? Because the G-force actually sucks the blood out of your brain and pushes it into your lower body. And if this is squeezing you real tight, it squeezes the blood back up. This suit is amazing. From the outside, it looks like a normal green jumpsuit. But it's actually a high-tech piece of safety equipment. My guess is these things are super rare and really collectible. How much did you want for it? I really don't have any idea. The G-suit's got me really intrigued. Being in this business 30 years, I have never seen a G-suit. Really? I actually have a friend who's a fighter pilot. He knows all about this stuff, and he'll be able to tell us what it's worth. Let me go give him a call. I'll be right back. OK, sounds good, man. Thanks, Thank man. you. I'm really looking forward to an expert coming in, and I'm hoping that he values it really high, because I'd like to get my wife something nice. Rick, how we doing? Matt, how's it going, man? This is what we got. Well, this looks familiar. I'm a US Marine Corps F-18 pilot with about 17 years experience. I'm a graduate of the Naval Fighter Weapons School, Top Gun, and a former US Navy Blue Angel pilot. You got your helmet here, and it looks like the standard helmet that any fighter pilot would wear. This G-suit looks really current, worn by all US fighter pilots in NATO. And you'll plug it into the jet, and this will give you about an extra G to a G and a half. Well, what's a G then? You figure you're atop of a roller coaster where you're kind of floating in the seat, that's a negative G, and you're coming down on the roller coaster, you're getting slammed in your seat, that's a positive G. If you were to weigh 100 pounds and you pulled eight Gs, your body would actually feel 800 pounds. What if you weighed 325 pounds? <laughs> It'd be a lot. What's this stuff go for? Now, looking at the helmet here, this is actually a pretty high-tech visor, so the helmet is probably worth a couple grand, you know, at least what the government paid for it. Okay. This, you know, maybe a little over a thousand, somewhere in there. I'm surprised your uh, brother-in-law didn't hold on to it. You, you can't buy this. This is some special stuff. It's hard to get a hold of. Okay. Thanks for coming in, man. You bet. Rick's concern was how to value this. It's a limited market. It's going to take a special person, maybe uh, some old fighter pilot with nostalgia. All right. So how much do you want for all this stuff? I'd probably be willing to settle for about two grand. <laughs> I was thinking more like 500 bucks. Ooh, 500. Mm. It's not like there's a million people out there buying it. Yeah, but you're not going to find this everywhere. You only get this if you were a pilot. How about 800 bucks? Mm, how about 15? I'll tell you what, I'll go a grand on it, and I don't even know why I'm going that much. Well, all right, grand's better than what I came in with. OK. All right. Write them up, Chum. Originally, I figured I could get 2000 but I settled on $1,000, and I'm really happy with that. I'll take my money and run. Hey, what can I help you with? My grandfather gave me this helmet. It's a football helmet. What fit you? No, my cranium's extremely large. It's for that huge brain of yours. <laughs> I'm coming down to the pawn shop to sell my old football helmet. The reason why I want to sell it is it's been sitting in my house forever collecting dust. I'm trying to sell it for $500, but the lowest I'd probably go is $200. Right around the teens or the 20s, the helmets became optional. It was much more brutal than today, a lot less rules. Literally, in one year in college ball, 12 people died. So eventually it became mandatory. And believe it or not, when they first came out, you went to a shoemaker to get your helmet made. I believe it. It's believed that the first football helmets were used back in 1893 in the Army-Navy game. But those helmets sucked. And by the 1940s, leather helmets like this were mandatory in the NFL. When they first came out, they didn't have the holes for the years. So guys hated them because you couldn't hear anything with them. This was just like a thick hat. The neat thing is, is most of these were tossed. 
Right. I mean, you just don't see these things anymore. And this one's in great shape. Like most Americans, I love football and I want this helmet. I have to be smart on the price because it's not tied to a particular player or team. How's it feel? It, not good. Um, so what do you want to do with this? I don't know. I'm wondering, you know, is there a, is there a market for like old time oh. memorabilia? I, there is. I mean, it's not associated with a player or a team or anything else like that. Um, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it. <sighs> hundred bucks, I can't, I, I can't do that. I'll go 100 and a quarter, that would be it, man. How about 130? No more haggling. All right, 130. I set it on 130 dollars, seeing that they wouldn't budge, so I figured I might as well just take what I can get and run with it. How you doing, man? So what do we got here? Got a couple of old airplane parts for you guys. I don't know. Looks like a cone head prop to me. I don't know, man. What's the deal with you putting stuff on your head? I like helmets. <laughs> so it looks like these are airplane spinners that go over the propeller. Exactly. My buddies that found them told me they, they basically go on the front of the, the turbine, makes the plane more aerodynamic. OK. Yeah, these look like they probably would have been like 1950s or 60s, maybe like a smaller passenger plane or like something like a business executive style plane, because they're Definitely not a commercial plane because right. they would be much, yeah, much way bigger. Too small. Yeah. I mean, they are cool, and I've made money off old propellers and stuff like that before. I just don't know if these spinners alone are worth anything or even usable. What are you trying to get out of them? Uh, I was hoping to get 750 for the three of them. Uh, I mean, Luca's here. You want to go ask him? Yeah, I can go ask him. So Luca is a friend of ours. He does some like art for us, and he helps us modify things. He lives in the area, so we invited him down. He might have an idea on what we could do with these. I'm going to go grab him. Go ahead. Here's what I wanted you to take a look at right now. Hey, what's up, Corey? What's up, Luca? Good to see you, man. Always a pleasure. I think these are called spinners. I'll agree with you. Probably came from a 1950s or 60s plane. They do look modified. There's a lot of holes in here, so it looks like somebody started a project and didn't finish it. So, Luca, what are you thinking we could do with these? Man, it's almost endless what we can do with them, guys. I'm thinking maybe we can turn them into lights or sconces. So you think you can work with these? Most definitely. I'm getting a good idea here, Big Hoss. If we are able to buy these, instead of selling these, we always get in the good graces of your dad when we give him a gift. And I think if we could figure out an idea to like fit these in to the style of his bar up at his organ house, these would actually look pretty cool in there. So we can give him a gift and make him pay for it. And he will still love it. So what do you think is safe to pay for something like this? Honestly, guys, with the condition they're in, it looks like somebody started a project that they didn't finish. So I think. Uh, with what we're going to have into it, I'd probably pay no more than $600 for these things. All right, well, what are you thinking? I mean, I wanted $750. He said somewhere around $600. That'd work for me. How about $300? Because he's not going to do this for free. I mean, $300 feels a little low. $600 feels a little high. What do you think, Big Hoss? And I don't think you have a place to sell them, so I think $400 bucks would be great. Yeah, I think I can make $400 work. All right, well, my cashier's over there. Um, Luca, it sounds like you got a job, man. <laughs> I'm only going to be here a few days. Can you get it done in that time frame? Yeah, we got a time crunch here to work with, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to get to work. I'll see you guys soon. Appreciate it. They'll get you paid up there. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, Luca, what's up? Hey, how you doing, Rick? Surprise! We got you a gift. What is this? For your Rick cave up in Oregon, your bar thing that you're building up there. I know how bad you wanted a picture of Pinky in your Rick cave, so there you go. Pretty cool, huh? It is pretty incredible. Well, you know what's incredible is you should have saw the condition these things were in when Luca got them. Do you know what they are? They look like airplane spinners. Well, nothing gets by you, Rick. We were doing the research. It came from a 1960s plane, right? So in that era, it was always a thin pinstripe, multiple colors but not too bright, not too bold. We did that to mimic that, and then I turned these into lights. And I'm excited because it came out great. That is a amazing way to repurpose some airplane parts. The best part is, this is from them to you. Thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate it. You're and welcome. We really got to go to another town. Thanks for helping me pack up. Yeah, I mean, it took you forever. What happened? 
There was a lot of stuff, and I had to do it by myself. Well, guess what? Your day's almost over. Just pack these up, and you'll be fine. I just got one more thing to pack up, Pops. Have a good night. Did you bring boxes? Just for the light bulbs. Excuse me, hello? Hey. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Rick said that since I've been coming into work late, I have to work the graveyard shift. But we made a deal that if I find the fire helmet to help him complete his set, that I'd be off the hook. So I thought the best place to start was a firehouse. I'm Chum Lee, how you doing? I'm Doug. I'm the on-duty battalion chief today. So where's the Dalmatians at? Uh, no Dalmatians at this station. Can I help you out? I'm looking for a late 1800 smoke helmet. Why are you looking for an 1800 smoke helmet? I, well, I work at a pawn shop, and I got in a little bit of trouble. With, but to back up a little bit, my boss bought a pump for the smoke helmet, but he doesn't have a helmet. So if I can find the smoke helmet that goes with the pump, I'm no longer in trouble. Okay. So I figured down here at the fire station would be the best place to start. Um, I was hoping maybe you guys had one laying around. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, we've only been in service since 1953 here. But uh, you, you know what? I got a, a friend of mine who deals with all sorts of um, firefighter antiques. I can uh, get your information, and I can pass it along to him. Yeah, you could do that for me? Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. Yeah, here, let me give you my number. All right, there we go. I gave the chief my number. He thinks he has some leads, so this better work out. I'm going to wait for his call. I think I could try on a firefighting suit? I can let you try on a firefighter suit. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet. Let's do it. Here are the boots. All right. Well, you know, they only have a minute to put it on. It's going to take me a minute to get my shoes off. We got the pants on in about a minute, and it's taking you quite a bit of time. This is pretty cool. All good to go. What about the helmet? Right here, the final piece. There, you're good to go. Hey, how's it going, man? I got a call from your pawn shop saying you would want to take a look at this. Um, yeah, I had one of my employees looking for one of these. Cool. I like it. You know what this is? I know exactly what it is. It's a smoke helmet. Probably. 1880-ish. Right. I bought an old fireman's air pump. I would love to get a suit and a helmet to go with it. If you have a complete set, you'll be able to get more money than you will for the parts separately. So I had Chum try to find one, and it looks like the kid actually pulled through. I'm shocked. <laughs> I guess Chum won't have to work the graveyard shift anymore. Yes, uh, it definitely looks Darth Vader-ish. Oh, do you want to come to the dark side? That was my pickup line on girls back in the 80s. Uh. <laughs> back in the 1800s, this was very top of the line technology. They used aluminum, brass, toughened leather. So this was very advanced. I know all firefighters are brave, but back in the 1880s, to use this contraption, they must have been really brave. God, it's cool. This was the 1880s. Uh, you know, local fire department was coming about all around the world, like in the United States, all over Europe. And, you know, it's just like today, you get a fire chief, he wants all the new coolest stuff. You could actually go into a burning building, you could actually save somebody with this. It was really, really innovative. And it was used with a pump and a smoke suit. The great thing is I have this. Right. That's the air supply, and the air supply for their diving helmets looked really similar. Just basically, you put your foot right here, and pump, and pump, and pump, and pump. <laughs> and that sends air to the firefighter that's inside the building. And what's amazing about this, it's over 130 years old, and it's in really good condition. What are you looking at? <laughs> I'm assuming the leather's been replaced. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. You can tell this has all been restored. This has been like re-lacquered, all this has right here. Basically, if you can tell how rough the hosing is, you can tell this thing's had a lot of restoration. But this has all been re-lacquered, all this leather's been replaced. Even though parts of the helmet have been modified, it's exactly what I'm looking for to complete the set. So I'm willing to play ball, I just have to make sure that I don't overpay. 
I mean, it, you know, it takes away some of the value, but not all. I mean, it, we still have a really rare, cool piece here. How much you want for it? Um, Six thousand dollars. I was asking for. Not gonna happen. No. Um, it's not a six thousand dollar helmet. It's one of the most common designs, and it's just not there. Okay. So what do you think? I give you fifteen hundred bucks. No, I can't do that. What about twenty five hundred? No, fifteen hundred bucks would be it. Yeah, I don't think I can do that. Are you sure? Yeah, I couldn't do fifteen hundred. Um, sorry you wasted your time coming down, man. I wasn't willing to give it away. I'm sure I can get a lot more since I didn't make the deal today. And um, it's a good piece. It's a solid piece, and it's a very rare and collectible piece.